We know that during election campaigns in Ukraine, there are very many observers. The observers not only are national ones, but international ones. And this has become an important mechanism to ensure fair and transparent elections. At the presidential and parliamentary election campaigns, very many missions have participated, the OSCE mission, the European NMO network, including the international mission of the World Congress, Ukrainian World Congress. At the moment, we have the president of the, that international mission of the World Ukrainian World Congress, who observed the election of 2019, Eugene Choli. Yevhen Yaroslavovich is also the president of the NGO called Ukraine 2050. This NGO cooperates with Ukraine and international organizations to develop a joint vision for the future of Ukraine. So Ukraine could become a democratic, European and independent organization. And we have seen in the media after the elections of 2019 and 2020, very many comments made by Mr. Choli, who in fact uh, pointed to a number of recommendations as to what should change, what should be amended to the current law, what other things that need to be carried out. I'm giving the floor now to Eugene Choli, who's going to talk about improving voting rights, electronic voting and countering disinformation. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Elena. First of all, I'd like to greet from Canada, the Supreme Court, and thank you for the organization of this very important, successful international scientific and practical conference, virtual conference, and to thank the President, dear Ms. Valentina Danishevsky, for the invitation to participate. During the latest presidential and parliamentary election campaigns in Ukraine, I headed the international mission of the Ukrainian World Congress to observe the elections of 2019 in Ukraine, and I had a chance to personally observe how the election law was applied. The Ukrainian World Congress mission consisted of short-term observers who watched the election process in Ukraine, as also the voting in the Ukrainian diplomatic missions in other countries where Ukrainians reside. The Ukrainian World Congress mission also included long-term observers from about 30 countries who, in 30 languages, monitored the media to see whether there was any disinformation in Ukraine in general and during the election campaigns. The subject of my presentation is improvement of voting rights. Let me first of all name five most important recommendations of the UWC missions and the regards to the election process. Number one, to make sure that the uh, debates between the presidential candidates should take place at least a week before the voting day and not only several hours before the day of silence to give proper time for the Ukrainian voters to completely understand the essence of the debates. Number two, to legislatively revoke the day of silence as an obsolete procedure that does not take into account the important role of the social media that the limitation does not cover. Three, to make sure that equal conditions are provided in the media space for the candidates of various political parties. Number four, ensure that the uh, establishment of the results of the presidential election should be over by the second round of the voting, because in 2019, that process theoretically could have lasted up to 21 days and end up only on the day of the second round election. And number five, to study some new initiatives that would make it easier to participate uh, in the elections for the Ukrainian voters abroad, who often had to cover very long distances in order to vote, including 
by increasing the number of stations or precincts in the uh, foreign um, voting district. Let me speak about two most important issues, electronic voting and countering disinformation in the course of the election process. As I was getting ready for this presentation, I remembered the extremely difficult circumstances in which Ukraine had its presidential and parliamentary elections in 2019, namely amid the Russian hybrid aggression against Ukraine, which included armed actions in east of Ukraine, occupation of Crimea, acts of terrorism, cyber attacks, and very powerful disinformation against Ukraine, and which in fact have they, they took away homes from 1.5 million of IDPs. Even in the days of the parliamentary and presidential election, the special monitoring mission of the OSCE documented more than 70 violations of the ceasefire regime in eastern Ukraine. In spite of all those challenges and obstacles, Almost incredibly, Ukraine conducted uh, democratic parliamentary presidential elections in 2019, which, conf which was confirmed by the international observers. Therefore, I compare the Ukrainian election campaigns with extremely controversial presidential uh, elections of 2020 in the United States of America. And for the first time, it came to my mind as regards the election process in Ukraine that the famous English proverb, <laughs> if it ain't broken, don't try to fix it. Uh, the CEC data also confirmed that more than 70% of the voters came to vote during the presidential election in 2019, which means that the Ukrainian voters have a high level of trust to their election system, which is a very positive phenomenon. Uh, however, the CC data also shows that the presence of the voters abroad was only about 13% during the presidential election and 14% during the parliamentary election, which was mostly caused by the large long distances that the voters had to take in order to implement their election right. So the UWC missions suggested different options to improve the situation, among which was electronic voting. The issue of electronic voting becomes all the more relevant today when the world is living through the COVID-19 pandemic, further hybrid Russian aggression, including thanks to huge funds that go into bots and cyber attacks and dissemination of information, disinformation, and as we see, digitization of Ukraine. So in order to develop a position in Ukraine about the need to introduce electronic voting, one needs to take into account the experience of other countries, starting with Estonia, which became the first ever country that used internet voting during its parliamentary election of 2007. The voters were authorized within the system with the help of their IV cards, which allowed them to vote. During the parliamentary election of 2015, the Estonian voters out of 100 and, and the voters from 116 countries of the world participated in the voting via internet. In 2019, at the parliamentary election in Estonia, more than 43% of all the votes were cast online. It's also useful to take into account the experience of other countries that partially use e-voting, namely Australia, Brazil, India, Canada, France, the United States, and Switzerland. Positive sides of electronic voting are the comfort in making one's choice for the citizens of Ukraine, including the ones who are outside of the territory of Ukraine, engaging the voters who are not very active, and the voters who live in the, uh, the territories with difficult access, better protection for the voting results, and in the future, uh, lower costs for the election process. 
The biggest challenges for electronic voting remain the computer viruses and cyber attacks, as well as quite high costs to introduce secure systems for electronic voting. Eventually, a perfect electronic voting clearly is more modern, sophisticated, and a more secure way to vote for the voters compared to the traditional voting ways. Therefore, in view of the growing digitization in Ukraine, electronic voting needs to be tested and improved. However, I believe that electronic voting can be introduced for the future election processes only when the government of Ukraine will be able to protect at a plausible level from computer viruses and cyber attacks, as well as provoke huge trust to electronic voting with the large ranges of Ukrainian nationals and the international community. As to the second issue, in terms of countering disinformation during the election process, one needs to first of all realize that disinformation is an important part of the hybrid aggression that the Russian Federation is openly waging since 2014 to get Ukraine back into its area of influence and regain control over Ukraine. As to the scale of this disinformation, this is what six years ago, on the 3rd of November 2015, the former Deputy Assistant State Secretary of the United States said, Benjamin Ziff. He said it while he testified to the Subcommittee on Cooperation in European and Regional Security of the Committee for Foreign Affairs of the U.S. Senate. I quote, Kremlin is sponsoring those efforts with a refined propaganda machine that costs one billion four hundred million U.S. dollars a year in its own territory and abroad. The scale of which, according to his estimates, cover 600 million people in 130 countries of the world, in 30 languages. The Russian government is also funding research centers and organizations in the neighboring countries that should promote its objectives by spreading false Kremlin narratives, by depicting the West as a threat, and by undermining trust to the independent media and Western values. The disinformation narrative during the presidential parliamentary elections in Ukraine of 2019 were quite different, versatile, were spread in many languages through traditional and social media. The target audience was not only the Ukrainian people, but the international community as well. A large part of those narratives uh, disseminated, uh, promoted the idea of falsified parliamentary uh, presidential elections with the uh, falsified or fake candidates. This information had to undermine the whole election process and all of the candidates in order to provoke mistrust of the Ukrainian voters to the elections in general and to portray in Ukraine as a failed state that does not deserve attention of the international community. All these disinformation narratives were completely discarded internationally, mostly thanks to the conclusions of the international missions of the OSCE and NEMO, NDI, Canada, and the European Parliament, that clearly pointed to the fact that Ukraine had conducted a democratic election in 2019. That's why, in spite of the fact that both the parliamentary and parliamentary election in Ukraine of 2019 complied with international standards for the democratic election, in Ukraine, given this active hybrid Russian aggression, Ukraine should continue inviting international missions of the observers to its elections in order to ensure 
fair assessment of the election campaigns for the Ukrainian citizens and the international community. Besides, Ukraine should promote, should make sure that quite a large number of well-known Ukrainian journalists would visit Ukraine on the eve of the election campaigns and to inform the international community about the real situation in Ukraine, including its election process. Today, all the democratic countries pay a lot of attention and efforts not only to secure their own election process, but also to affirm confidence in it among its people and the international community. The authorities of Ukraine need to take the international experience into account as they have to counter disinformation, particularly during the election campaigns, to promote fair and democratic elections in Ukraine. As an example, in 2017, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron, explained that he had not given access to representatives of two Russian agencies to his own headquarters during the presidential election, because in fact they were the agents of influence and untrue propaganda. The Supreme Court and the Ukrainian administrative courts will play a very important role in this respect, because they will need in their decisions to protect the freedom of expression as well as to ban propaganda directed at undermining the election process and confidence in it among the citizens of Ukraine. It is necessary to resort to other strategies in Ukraine and beyond because disinformation channels are diverse. Due to that, it's uh, even more important for Ukraine to keep in mind 25 million of the diaspora when it comes to exercising monitoring with, uh, with respect to disinformation against Ukraine and to develop uh, countermeasures uh, to combat disinformation. As to media monitoring, our mission provided eight uh, recommendations to combat disinformation and uh, uh, that includes uh, election campaigns in Ukraine. The first is uh, to increase the level of awareness as to risks and threats of disinformation for political stability, social economic well-being and protection of fundamental freedoms. Number two, to develop strategic program of uh, combating disinformation, uh, which is an important element of hybrid aggression of Russian Federation against Ukraine. Three, to set up commission to coordinate uh, d different uh, stakeholders, actors uh, engaged in the process of uh, prevention, identification, analysis, and uh, combating disinformation and its negative impact. Four, organize monitoring group composed of uh, diaspora representatives that would, uh, on ongoing regular basis, uh, uh, monitor tr uh, mainstream and social media in their respective countries. Uh, to identify uh, manipulations and disinformation about Ukraine at large and democratic processes in Ukraine in particular. Five, establish cooperation with uh, the governments of Western countries and international organizations to exchange experience and information to effectively uh, uh, deal and combat disinformation and have coordinated efforts, concerted efforts uh, to deal with this uh, phenomenon globally. Six, uh, find effective ways of cooperation with Google, YouTube, social media such as Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and uh, communication platforms, uh, WhatsApp, Viber and Telegram to uh, combat uh, disinformation dissemination. Seven, invest invest uh, in media awareness uh, among Ukrainians to include disinformation and manipulation issues through specialized uh, trainings and uh, critical thinking subjects and media literacy subjects to be introduced into um, schools and uh, institutions in their curricula. Eight, uh, uh, contribute to the development of independent, high-quality media outlets that would effectively uh, disseminate uh, 
truthful information about Ukraine among other, uh, other different audiences in other countries. Hopefully, these conclusions and recommendations will be useful to improve election process in Ukraine, and I'm sure that uh, Ukraine will develop uh, its uh, election law in civilized, democratic uh, manner. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Eugene, for your presentation. Secondly, today is a national holiday, Day of Canada. So we would like to congratulate you on this uh, holiday. On uh, June 1, 1868, 67, the act uh, was uh, signed whereby three provinces uh, uh, got united into a state called Canada. Thank you. 